organization is there to support your business objectives, okay? And part of these business objectives will be reached through you engaging with your employees, through you recognizing what your employees are doing, and through you making your employees, convincing your employees to apply whatever you stand for. Successful internal communication acknowledges the input of employees, but at the same time leads to action. This can mean change, and we're going to discuss about change, I, I guess, a bit later, or this can lead to different services. Now, when you think of tactics, internal communication includes a lot of ways in which we can achieve this. Staff events, I think we all have been to a party, at least the Christmas one, when one of our colleagues made a fool of themselves. Um, <laughs> we've probably been to briefings, and depending on how good or not that proficient the speakers were, we heard one of our colleagues trying to snore the back of the room, it should be that, where it happens. We've been into meetings when probably one of your colleagues got frustrated because you were taking notes on your iPhone and they thought that you were texting with your friends. Um, newsletters, feedbacks, survey, oh, the survey. You, get, you still get those on paper, and then you lose them and say, oh, I'll do it later. I have so many emails to so I'll do this later. And then you forget about it, and somebody will chase you for half a day asking for the survey back. Or idea generation, which people call brainstorms. Um, yeah, I think in Romanian it's a fortuna de creere, right? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work. Um, but anyways, traditional, traditional ways include these tactics. Now the question is, if you have social media, what happens with these? Most of the people will tell you that face-to-face -face communication is still the key. Through face-to-face -face, you can see the reaction. You can see whether someone gets angry and blushes. You can see whether their nose is dilating and therefore lying to you. You can see if their palms are sweating and trembling and whatnot. Face-to-face -face dictates the rules. But then on the other hand, you can call them up. And if their voice is trembling, oh my dear, what will they? And they're just telling you they're in the elevator, but they're not. <laughs> Email, of course it works. And then intranet, we've, we've seen quite a successful example, which tries to go beyond the internet as we knew it. Now I'll take a break. I want you to think of corporate speak. I want you to think of how we come up with different languages. Yeah. We all, when, especially when you're in a big organization, you want to enhance communication, but you also want to protect their secrets that we have to keep. This is why it's internal communication, otherwise we call it anything else but that. So, yeah, more scope probably is not the best idea to tell your colleague that you've said the email. But, let's think a little about scenarios. Social media usually works around bringing communities together, right? It has a social component in that. Now, this social component within an organization means that it's supposed to bring engagement. Questions are related to what is it that we need social media to do, to do it better, than we could have done it through face-to-face -face phone email on the internet, okay? So here's one of the question, one of the criteria that I'd like you to consider comes into place. Size of the organization. We'll, we'll get into funds a bit later. Now, if you're in a big corporation where you have offices all over through the country and then practically around through the world, you need to liaise as quickly as possible with your colleagues. Okay? Now, we start with staff events. That's, that's the best part. When you have a staff event, how many of you have been to parties that everybody had a camera? And how many of you have been in a group picture and you had to stay like this for at least 10 minutes because everybody had to have the picture on their own respective camera. Yes, it sounds familiar, isn't it? It's a digital picture for God's sake. Take one, put it up on Flickr. So, in this case, if you have a free account, you go to a staff park, you have one member of your group who's a bit geeky and loves pictures, and put them up on Flickr, and then share that. If you're weary about your privacy, make that set or that collection of pictures private. And therefore, everybody who will get that link will be able to see the pictures, will be able to download them, and voila. 
Yes, you're going to say, well, but we have the internet for that. Fair enough. If you have an internet. Because if you're a small and medium company, if you're a shop around the corner, and you still want to have a staff, then you won't. So, Flickr might be a better idea. Some of you will say, well, I love Picasa. Fine. Go with Picasa then. So there are tools there that you can use for a purpose. Look, um, these guys from City Park Mall had had a party, and somebody put it on YouTube. I wonder if anybody told them that they're phone because their dance is really bad. But, again, if you know the settings and the rules of each of these platforms, you can face very nice memories from staff things. The nicest ones are not probably the dancing when everybody's not very coordinated toward the end of the evening, but rather team buildings, having those videos through which people do something together. They trust you to fall from a chair that you'll catch them and not let them bruise themselves. Videos, okay? It's a collection, it's an archive. Depending on settings, you can make them public if you want to have a laugh with the whole world, or you can keep them private. Animoto. Um, not sure if you've heard of it. You can have it on your mobile phone. I love this. It's extremely simple. You're just dragging a couple of pictures together. Um, you can put some text in between. Um, if you want, you can integrate a video, then you choose a song, then you click. Ta da! Your video's done. Have a look. It's as simple as that. Small and medium companies, startups that have a geeky feel to them, might love this um, and uh, might play with it. Mm -hmm. If you're into Facebook and we have that talk, give them Facebook if they want to. Be brave and embrace it. Yes, but I lived in Bahrain. I've been through the Arab Spring a little bit. You don't exactly want to be on Facebook when your Facebook can be hacked. So um, when the Arab Spring started in Bahrain and the protest started, the only way that expats could keep in touch um, that were both in the country and outside was through Facebook at that point. However, we've created an ultra-secret group. Now that means that, again, you need to know the rules, you need to know what the platform allows you to do, and then in the case of the Arab Spring, you need to know how much the hackers can do. But that's a different story. Um, Gowala and um, Fourth Square could be quite interesting. Yes, that's when you want to see if everybody comes to work and then at what time they check in. And then they fight over um, who's the mayor of the entry hall, isn't it? Or the door. Oh, that made it to work five minutes earlier or five seconds than everybody else. Caution though, if you're working on ultra secret projects, you don't exactly want to know the whole world and, you're, and your competitors knowing that your employees are checking in, are clocking in every time at 10 o'clock to your research facility. Yeah? It's fun. It's good for internal comms in the sense of letting them know that they checked in at the party. It's good to know that they're in time at work, but it's not that good if you have very secret stuff to do. Okay? Think of sales pitches. You're working on a new client. You need to let your team know that you're, you're there. Maybe. Yeah, maybe that's not the best idea. Now, let's think of meetings. That's really important. That brainstorming. Um, those thoughts can be really interesting. I'm sure you've been in situations when you wanted to go to a meeting and your taxi was late, your bus was stuck, it was really rainy, your shoes got muddy, something happened and then your nose started running. And so you just didn't exactly want to go. We can do it remotely. I love the UK. I, I really do, because we can work from home. And that's one of the things that I really enjoy. Why I can work from home, either as a lecturer or as a consultant, because I know these gizmos. Now, you can do it, like Barack Obama did, see? There's something better than I did. Um, you can go and have a Google Hangout. Yeah, no, there's not a party when everybody hangs out. It's um, Google Hangout allows you to have up to 10 people connected live with video streaming and audio at the same time. Now, that's a big thing, which means that everybody can talk at the same time, and that can be confusing if no offense if you have Italians on the line. <laughs> Romanians do, I like here. So Google Hangout is one of your options. Then um, you can do Skype. But if you want to record the meetings, because that's really important, so otherwise somebody will have to write up, then um, you can do Account Twist, Pamela, or Call Recorder, and that's for Mac. Pamela is for, um, for Windows. Um, call Recorder records your calls. You can also do WebEx. From 
Francisco, but these guys will have to pay for it. Um, or go to meeting, and in this case, you can bring in a lot of people, and you can have discussions, somebody will be a moderator, you can have a screen share in, in between, and you can record it as well so that it can be seen. Now think about the uses, this is good for training. I know we get into nuances of internal communications, but there is a point when, through internal comms, you need to train your staff. That might be a good way. If you love it to be on the mobile, then you have all these. And we have Anthony from my radio who's going to tell you more about how they work. But remember that some of these advantages of social media rely on the fact that the platforms are actually cross-device. So most of the stuff that you do enables you to be really, really mobile, very fast, very quick. It's a choice. However, be always aware of what the privacy settings are, what your objectives are, and whether anybody else in your company knows about this. There are plenty of other things. I'm going to go really, really quickly through these. I have two more minutes. Okay. One. <laughs> through collaboration, you can then end up in idea generation. We've seen wiki, we've seen blogs, which are really great. And to a degree, we can put them in web 1.5 of sorts, because they're not really social. Um, in the sense that we cannot exactly talk at the same time, but we can. Collaboration is related to collaborative authoring and productivity. And when you look at productivity, Skyline is quite pretty, comes up with invoicing. So small <coughs> companies that do not have the money to pay for packages that are very extensive for programming might look at that and try to see how that would work into their corporation. Zoho is the favorite of NGOs. I know several ones, including one in Brazil, who backed up and uses everything in Zoho rather than having, um, rather than using Microsoft licensed software. Again, it goes, please look through these because they are related to productivity, collaboration, working at the same time um, on the same documents or working live on documents, um, invoicing, sharing, and all sorts of other things. Glass Cubes is quite great, has a mobile integration, <laughs> um, brings in blogging with video sharing, with social networking, with your traditional <coughs> internet tools in the same platform. These come with a price. Um, Juggling is not And then notes of pipe which we're going to look through. Finally, social text from these here. Social text seems to be the baby and the favorite of bigger groups, bigger companies that have the money to invest. And it's similar to glass cubes to a degree. And um, Chatter and Yammer are a replica of Twitter, but this is internal. Now, let me finish this. This doesn't mean that whatever exists out there that you know is free, you cannot use because you're a big corporation. Yes, you can. But big corporations have a responsibility to many stakeholders, internal and external. And one of these responsibilities is related to data protection. Data protection that is related to the people that they represent and data protection that is related to the services that they develop or provide. So when you're in a big organization, probably way more than when you're in a small one, you need to protect those assets. So in this case, going for a solution that is encrypted and therefore costs you a little bit more might be the better idea than going for free. When you're at the beginning of your business and you want to experiment with things and you have the time to go for trial and error, then have a dashboard of tools. Have a, as I said, have a trial and error sort of process through which you find what works for you. But always keep in mind these questions, objectives. What do you want social media to do for you? It's not that you use the tool because you can, but what is that tool doing for you? Privacy. Are you putting your people's lives, personal lives, and jobs in jeopardy? by sending them through these platforms, or are you protecting them? Integration, do they work with what you have, or do you have to migrate everything that you've used to these platforms? Because if you do, a lot of people won't be happy. So if they integrate, it means that you build up on what you have. And finally, budget. Can you afford it? Does it help you out? Well, that's it, I gotta breathe, and somebody else is in the queue. Thank you very much.